Welcome to Kickstart Your Career, your free course to set you on your way to find your dream job. In this episode, I explain how to approach the negotiation process when you've been made a job offer. What is it that you need to do to make it a win-win situation for your new employer and for you? So we go through we go through the process, we go through the interview, we ask the right questions, people are impressed with us, and so they come to us and they want to make us an offer. And so now we're moving into really the last step in the seven step process, which is the success strategies in your new role. If they come back to you after an interview and they make you a job offer, you should just say yes immediately, correct? No, not at all. Don't ever say yes to anything without thinking about it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You go, oh, that is wonderful. Okay, thank you so much for the offer. That is, I'm really interested to go through the letter of offer and the contract. Because say if they make you an offer on the spot and you're uh, at the interview, you're going to be so excited that everything you hear is going to sound so good because all you remember is we'd like to make you an offer. And so you need to be able to have a little bit of a cooling off time as well. So don't say yes immediately. Just just say that you're very excited. You're looking forward to going over the contract and the letter of offer because there may be some things that you would like to negotiate. What is the right way to open up a negotiation with a potential employer. Okay. So once you've had some time to go through your contract or the letter of offer, if there are some areas that you really are hoping for, maybe higher compensation or more flexibility or whatever it might be that that you want more of, then you need to find out if there is room for negotiation. And so what I always suggest is make sure that you decide what is your walk away point before opening up negotiations, because you don't want to go in there without being well prepared. Because if the offer as it stands is not acceptable, and you will definitely walk away if there is no leeway at all, you need to make that decision before you start talking, because you'll start to oscillate. And if you're someone who isn't used to negotiation, it's really quite an anxious time. And I'm hoping that you have already done your research with regard to uh, the salary levels in that particular industry, in that city, wherever you are, so you're not asking for the moon uh, unreasonably, then you can go back to them and say, thank you so much for the offer. Can you let me know, is there room for negotiation? Now, they might ask, what would you like to negotiate, which gives you the clue that, ah, there might be a little bit of leeway here. Or they might say, I'm really sorry, but our hands are tied. It's at this grade. And that's, you know, the offer is the best that we can do. So you will have decided at that point, whether you can say, well, thank you so much. But after consideration, I'm unable to accept this offer. But if there is room for negotiation, then please try and set a face to face meeting. Negotiation is always best done face to face. So if you're able to set a face to face meeting, then you can go in with your agenda, just have maybe two or three items, let's not have 10 things to negotiate, it ends up being too many. Um, And then when you go through the negotiation process, negotiate what's most important to you first, and then everything else will be jam really, if you get it, if you start with the easy easy things for them to say yes to. When it comes to the important thing to you, if you've left it to last because you're feeling a bit nervous about it, that probably would be a no. What I would rather you do is negotiate the important thing first. If you get that as a as a yes or a compromise, then everything else will be really the additional jam on the piece of bread. How do you weigh multiple job offers? And then secondly, should you play one job offer off of another? Mm, There'll always be one that you prefer. And the one that is your chosen one always comes last. The offer always comes last. So you get the offers for the ones that, you know, you think, oh, it's my second or my third choice first. But you don't want to lose them because you don't know if the 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 dream role is going to come up or not. So say if you've received um, a number of offers, uh, but the dream role offer hasn't come yet, you can actually approach the screener or whoever's doing the selection or the hiring manager to say, look, I've, I've received a number of offers and I'm wondering how far along in the process am I? Am I seriously in contention for this role as I have another offer and they're pushing me for a response. So the benefit of doing that is that it might hurry your dream role along a little bit in the process if they don't want to lose you or 
you'll know for sure if you are in serious contention or not. But if you've got two or three offers and you think, you know, I'd quite like all of them, they're all okay. The way to actually weigh them up is to go back to, I have my dream role assessment uh, that we mentioned early on. If you go through, okay, job location, job function, size of company, compensation base, perks of the role, all of those things that are tangible benefits to you. And then compare one with the other. How important are each of these aspects to you? And how closely does each of these offers match what I want? You can actually apportion a a, a number to each one as to say zero to 10 with 10 being perfect. And then you'll be able to see quite systematically which role actually is the most suitable for you without getting really emotional about it. Then you need to look at the intangible side, such as the corporate culture, the personality of the boss, the team environment, things like that that are important to you. Which one fulfills that the most? Because that's going to be where the true job satisfaction is. It's amazing how at this point we have now come full circle. We're we're right back kind of where where we started minus minus the stress and all that, but we're back at the uh, you know assessing what's right for you step where you're you've already decided because you took the life inventory these things are important to me and these things are not. And while we were doing it before to to assess what we thought we might want to apply for, now here we're doing it again, but this time to determine what job we might actually take. You see, there is method in my madness, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, I tell you, I have learned a lot during our conversation, and I'm sure a lot of those listening today have learned a lot as well. For those who would like to learn more, can you give us the best ways for them to get in touch with you and to pick up a copy of your book? Oh, thank you so much. Well, first of all, my website is janejacksoncoach.com. And I'd love you to hop onto the website because I have a lot of interesting information there. I've got blog posts. I've got free ebook downloads on how to find the job you love. A lot of free stuff. Um, And then I also have access to um, a link there. If you just go to navigatingcareercrossroads.com, that's actually the direct landing page for my book. Or you can just go to amazon.com, look for Navigating Career Crossroads, and you'll find it there as an ebook or as a paperback book. If you want to email me directly, I'm Jane at janejacksoncoach.com. And please follow me on Twitter. My handle is Jane Career Coach. And she does respond. I'm a voucher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And please find me on LinkedIn. If you just type in Jane Jackson, you're going to find thousands of them. But if you type in Jane Jackson Career Coach, I'll be way up there. So you'll be able to find me there. And I'd be very happy to connect if you send me a personal note. No, just hitting the button then? Mm-hmm. No, don't hit the button. This is one thing we didn't mention <laughs> in LinkedIn. If you just randomly click add, 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 add connections, you'll find that you're not actually going to get that many connections and they're not going to be real. This is networking, looking for a job, expanding your career. It's networking. So if you're going to approach someone, even though I've given everyone the invitation to uh, connect with me, please send me a note. Tell me why you want to connect. Tell me a little bit about yourself and then I'll feel that I know you. I'll probably send a response first before I connect to say, oh, you know, nice to meet you. Tell me even more about yourself and then we can connect. But if it's just one of those generic connection requests, nope. I, I, I tend not to respond to them. <laughs> okay, Jane, any final thoughts, words of wisdom or tips, anything you'd like to leave with the listeners today? I would say take a step back, assess what makes you really happy in your life. And the most important thing is believe in yourself and create magic. Well, congratulations on completing the Kickstart Your Career free course. I hope that you're now feeling a lot more confident and aware of what you need to do to secure your dream role. It's now time to take action. If you need more help, check out all that I have to offer on janejacksoncareers.com. I offer one-on-one coaching, webinars, workshops, also my book, Navigating Career Crossroads, and plenty more online training if that's what you prefer. Do follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram as well. Ask me questions if you've got any and my handle is at 
Jane Career Coach. It's time to now kickstart your career.